certain aspect to it. And just like you point out with these federal mandates, yeah, they want to have these educational institutions educate people on this, but it does not require students to give personal information or opinions. And the key here is that it's going to a third party corporation. Yeah, so you can pretty much, if you read their uh, user agreement, uh, they can do pretty much anything they wish to do with it. Mm. And uh, also the required information that uh, by law, they are required to provide us education on this. But I found that uh, at least at my local school and many others that I've looked at, it's all uh, in their federal reports, pretty much all the required information. If you just read that or hand out a 15 page brochure, uh, that's pretty much everything that's required by law. So the key here with this story is that this is a complete overstep of the law. These companies are now taking this information and using it for their own purposes. It's not mandatory yet across the country, but it's going to be. So it's important that we fight back while the law still is in our hands. I mean, if you look at other stories that are coming out, college is forcing freshmen to wear Fitbits that track all of their moves so they can see how much they're exercising throughout the day. Or a lot of people were saying that uh, these wellness programs that the insurance providers, uh, they would offer you some incentives if you participate in these wellness programs. Well, now they're becoming uh, involuntary. They're mandatory. Um, like we're seeing an employee who was his in, his insurance was taken away from him completely because he refused to give in to this biometric screening um, that the insurance company was forcing on the company uh, there. So, I mean, you're seeing that this it, it's voluntary at first, but it's becoming mandatory. And that's why it's time to understand what you're doing. I mean, we saw the video there with Mark Dice where he was just walking up to random people on the street and asking for their information. And because he was authoritative and because he seemed as though he was the authority figure, they were just offering him up all of their personal details. So it's time for people to wake up, quit buying into this ultimate surveillance state, quit offering up your information freely, know where it's going. And when you see something fishy like this at your university, stand up. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet. I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key in ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that 
uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the steiners and remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And welcome back. When you turn on your television, you don't see too much accurately portrayed about the Bible. You see many other types of shows, magic shows, uh, cop shows, uh, crime shows but very little based on the Bible, and that also extends to video games. And with more on this, we have Mike Madden. He is the Director of Development for Kingdom Games right here in Austin, Texas. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Thank you for having me. Okay, so what spurred you on the route to make a biblically-based video game? Uh, you highlighted a lot of it in your opening, saying that it's not prevalent there, and uh, the founders recognize that in looking at where kids are spending their time, and rather than fighting to remove them from that, that activity, uh, let's take those great historical uh, stories that are, are just founded in moral and ethics in many ways and, and put it in front of them in a, in a medium that they enjoy spending time on. Um, I think you can ask any child about their favorite game and they'll tell you top to bottom from characters and world lore. So they obviously retain from that process. So we felt it was a place that we could, uh, we could contribute in a different way and, and present a different offering and a different option for parents. Yeah, that's a great point to make because oftentimes when you talk about teaching kids about the Bible, it's a, a cartoon movie or a coloring book, and all those things are well and good, but as the kids mature, they kind of spur off that. So if you tap into the video game market, you know, it's just another way to get to them. So yeah. as far as the gameplay, uh, I don't want to give away too many of your trade secrets, but you know, no what kind of experience can somebody expect from playing one of your video games? Uh, it is an action RPG, um, similar to a, a lot of other games that are out there, like Torchlight and, and some other very successful titles. Uh, but we are based on the biblical era and, and that time period. Uh, so it's a lot of, there is fighting. I mean, the Bible is a, has a lot of violent moments. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried to make it a very good video game, regardless of your belief system. So that way we can capture, you know, and, and it's, passive in its learning um, in, in how you can experience it and take it just as a video game story. And then there's also elements and nuggets of, of information that if you want to look further into where this came from or a piece of scripture, you can dive into that as well. So uh, it's an action RPG game, lots of combat and, and lots of characters. You control five heroes of David um, as he is uniting the region under the, uh, the, the, the flag of Israel. Absolutely. Now, video games can be a very uh, educational experience mm -hmm. in a positive way, because I will attest, uh, when, back when I was younger, I used to play mm -hmm. Metal Gear Solid. Yep. And when I was a kid, I thought it was just all fiction. I mean, of, great, of course, it is a fictional story. It is. But the first time I heard about DARPA, you know, the type of weaponry that they mm -hmm. were developing, I didn't realize a lot of that stuff was true until I came to work here. And I was like, that's in the video game I played like 10 years ago, and yeah. this stuff is true. So, yeah, it can be very educational for the people who want to take that route with the, uh, with the material. Absolutely. And uh, there's, there's lots more stories to tell, and we're going to continue to do that. And um, we're, we're trying to change and, and add things, as, as I mentioned, on the ethical and moral side of things, where rather than every game being about hoarding treasure and how much you accumulate, 
we've got a donation system where the more you give, you actually benefit the whole of the people and your community. So we're really trying to, to make a good, fun game and be engaging, but also, if we can, teach them, teach them some good values along the way and, and hopefully change some perceptions of yes, what video with, games can be. With Kingdom Games, when did you guys get started? Oh, uh, I guess that was 2013 in August. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 2013. So about, two, about two years now, almost two and a half years. Okay, so you have your titles coming out uh, mm -hmm. further on down the road. Are you? Do you want to focus on this title? Do you already have some things in mind of what you want to do in the future? Well, Five Guardians of David, which is our first release, came out in November, uh, available on Steam, is uh, is a saga in that it is a long general generational story that we will tell. So we are looking and actively developing on that. Uh, but again, we are always looking at what other stories and cultivating and, and what other projects we can take on. Um, but right now, five and continuing on that path right now is, is our focus. Yes, now, as we started mm -hmm. off saying in our introduction, uh, there's not a lot of stuff going on in the mainstream media. Correct. And a lot of times that when you do have a movie such as uh, uh, the movie came out with Russell Crowe, uh, yeah. when we played Noah, a lot of people criticized that. Of course. Um, so how accurately are you trying to stay to the biblical principles that are in the Bible, the biblical stories that are in the Bible? As much as we can be, um, but again, there, it's that balance of needs to be a fun, engaging thing, mm -hmm. um, where, where it's not an action moment. Um, we actually have the, the same artist that did the comic, uh, the Action Bible, which is a, a very oh, yeah, graphic I've seen novel. I've okay. Seen that. Well, we, we worked with Sergio and all of our cut scenes are in a comic book fashion. So. Uh, we've talked to people that are in seminary and whatnot who have commented on how in detail we go for this period of the story. And we cover David and Goliath up through Bathsheba and, and the Uriah tragedy. So it, uh, it really focuses and is about a 20 hour game experience in that, that time period. And um, we try to be as accurate as we can, but still lean on fun. And, yeah, and we don't want to burden the player too much with uh, unfun activities, if you will. Yes, and the story of King David is filled with action. You know, the saying that Saul killed thousands, David killed tens of thousands. Right. So <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of action to be had. And it's a really interesting story because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know that uh, King David is David from David and Goliath. That's so right. as you pointed out there, uh, you start him you know, as a young shepherd boy yep. up to uh, the height of his kingdom, I guess. That's correct. And, and you actually take on the role alongside and parallel to this storyline where you do get to play David in the David and Goliath fight, but you're playing five of his mighty men that are called out in, in the Bible, uh, Abishai and Benaiah and Joshua Beam and, and Shama and Eleazar. Um, and so each has kind of a separate fighting style and you can switch to them at any time while you play. And, and so we can have a little looseness in their conversations and dialogue by staying true to the David story because we're not playing David. And so it kind of goes alongside and, um, yeah, it's great. It works out really, really well. Yeah. Good it's parallel really story. Well. Okay, so you said it's on Steam. Uh, so if somebody was watching this and they want to get it right now, what do they yeah. need to do? Uh, you can go to Steam is a uh, PC delivery platform, uh, really good, secure way to buy digital content. Uh, go there, search for Five Guardians of David. You can go to our website, uh, kingdomgames.com or fiveguardiansofdavid.com, and there's links and everything all around. So, yeah, we'd love for you to take a look at it. All right, Mike, let's talk a little bit about your history. Uh, what, what brought you into the world of video games? Because I'm sure there are many people, you know, gamers and fans watching this right now, and they're thinking, well, how can I get to the point where I'm the director of development? So just with about uh, three minutes we have, sure. tell people a little bit about Mike Madden. Um, I, I w had a little bit of a troubled youth, I would say. I uh, didn't really pay attention to school at the time that I was in it. Um, I'll agree. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it happens to a lot of us. Uh, unfortunately, took a different path, and... Uh, about 1920, uh, kind of had to hit the reset button on life. Games have always been a part of my childhood and playing them. Um, but found an ad that said game players wanted. It happened to be Sega in 1991 and uh, as a QA tester. And I've been doing this for about 25 years now. In the first week of that job, I realized this is a career. And I've completely de dedicated myself to it. Um, I'm self-taught. And that's one thing about this industry. I can teach anybody to make a game. Mm -hmm. I can't teach you to have the passion. Yes. And that's what it takes. And if you care enough, we can overcome everything else. And, yes. and so 
Um, I'm very passionate about what I do. It's not a job for me. I wake up every day excited. Yeah, well, that's I'm good, you know, because uh, that's a lot of things that, you know, kids miss, and, you know, they go to college and whatever. And you, like you said, you can teach somebody mm -hmm. the, uh, the fundamentals, the skill, the but if you don't, have the, you don't have the passion, you can't teach right. somebody the ambition right. to be, uh, you know, self-taught yeah. as you are, because a lot of the guys in the crew here, they're self-taught.